Hi everyone, so, I um, can't remember where I'm at because like I say I'm redoing some of these videos because the audio didn't work. Basically what I'm going to do is uh, to help you with your assignments, to support you a bit more with your M1, we're always going to make uh, mechanics a feature. So for the next few weeks I'm making videos for you on a variety of different uh, connected particles, attention problems. Um, the idea is that you can kind of work along with me or you can fly off and then watch the video but you're always checking the answers and you're always checking your layout the layout is the most important thing here so if I were you I would pause the tape and I would just go for it and then compare with mine okay so here we've got a particle in equilibrium under the action of three coplanar forces that just means they're all acting in the same plane I if I uh, I could put a piece of paper against these three forces and they would all touch the paper, all right? I, they're not going off in all different directions in the 3D sense, okay, in the Z-axis sense. Uh, you can see they've got a magnitude, blah, blah, blah. Find to one decimal place the value of theta. Okay, so as always, we need to split up our uh, forces into par perpendicular and parallel uh, forces. So at the moment, this one here is off to a skew. So we need to split this up. So if that whole thing's theta, this one must be 180 minus theta. As this component is next to the angle, this must be 12 cos 180 minus theta. And there's an upwards component, which is 12 sine 180 minus theta. And now we can resolve, can't we? So if we resolve left and right, we get 12 cos 180 minus theta minus x must equal 0, as it's in equilibrium. So x must be 12 cos 180 minus theta. It wants us to find theta, so we can't at the moment because we don't know what x is. So not to worry, we'll resolve up then. So up is 12 sine 180 minus theta. Down is 8, and it all equals 0 as it's in equilibrium. So now we can solve. So sine 180 minus theta would be, if I move the 8 over, divide by 12, 8 over 12. So that's 3 over 4. So now I, 180 minus theta is sine to the minus 1, 3 by 4. So remember, this is in degrees. So 180 minus theta is going to be... Sine to the minus 1, 3 by 4, 48.59, and therefore theta is 180. If I move theta over, 180 minus 48.59, so theta is 180 minus answer, 131 uh, degrees, and it says to one decimal place, so 0 0.4 degrees to 1 dp. Brilliant. And part B, remember says find the value of x and we know that x is this from earlier so now we can just shove in our value of theta which is 31.4 but i'll use my exact value on my calculator so 12 cos 180 uh, minus that was the, my answer so um, So 12 cos 180 minus our exact value gives us 7.94 newtons to 2 dp, as asked for. In these mechanics videos, if you think I've made a mistake, make sure you tell me uh, at the earliest opportunity, right? So then we can see if I'm right or wrong, or we can fix it, because I'm just going for it in these videos, right? Okay, second situation. So, we've done this kind of thing before, but let's make sure now we understand what things, what's happening. So, two ends of, of a single string are attached at A and B of a horizontal beam. A, tack, uh, a package of mass 2 kg is attached. So, as we know, attached means the string is in equilibrium, but it's... Uh, the forces, the tension forces, are not going to be equal. So if that's T2, this one is T1. And you've got your 
mass 2 kg, so your weight is 2g here. So if you understand that, then it's okay. Now we can find the tension in AC and the tension in BC because we need to resolve our forces. So tension one has an up component and it has a left and right component and tension two has the same. So this is a Z angle, isn't it? So 40, so that means this is 40. This component is next to the 40, so this is 2T cos 40. So the other one must be 2T sine 40. This one again, a Z angle, so that's 20 degrees there. So this one is next to, so T1 cos 20, and the other one T1 sine 20. And now we can solve this problem. It looks horrible. But we can do this. So if we resolve up, we've got T1 sine 20 plus T2 sine 40 equals 2G. If we resolve left, right, so if we go right, T2 cos 40 minus T1 cos 20 equals 0 as, as it's in equilibrium. So two, T2 must be T1 cos 20, moving that over, divided by cos 40. Simultaneous equations, this T2 goes in here. So it looks a bit nasty, and it's all about the algebra skills, folks. So T2 is T1 cos 20 over cos 40, and we've still got the sine 40 there as well, equals 2G. We need T1 by itself, so we need to take a factor of T1 here and here. Can you see they've both got T1 in them? And this all just comes with experience. If you find my algebra too fast, just slow it down, take your time. You need to divide then sine 20, cos 20, sine 40, cos 40. And now we can whack this in our calculators. So be careful with your calculators. Make sure you're doing this at the same time. It's not for my benefit. I know how to use my calculator really quickly. But do you? So do it, you know. No point just sitting there passive. Practice with your calculator. People who are good at maths are fast with their calculators. So 17.3 newtons to free SF. Okay. And therefore we can find T2, which is your tension in B, by shoving your answer for T1 back into here. So T2 is 17.3 but of course I'll use my answer in my calculator over cos 40 so times cos 20 divided by cos 40 and you get 21.3 newtons to free SF wicked now remember there is a quicker way than this using vector triangles but let's not complicate the matters at the moment. I think practicing your resolving in your algebra is important. If you want to talk about vector triangles, I know, I know I've done it with a class already, but you know maybe the other classes haven't seen it. I can't remember. If you want to ask about it, then just give us a shout. Okay? All right. Next example. Last example. There's always three examples. Okay. So this time, P and Q... Mass is 5 kg and 10 kg respectively, connected by a light and extensible string. So let's get the tension going straight away. So tension's there. 10 g, 5 g, normal reaction. Okay, cool. Uh, fix it on rough plane. Okay. So rough plane. And it tells us the coefficient of friction is 0.2. So 0.2 R. Rough plane, it says that where tan alpha is inclined at 0.75, so to the side, this is what you should be doing. Okay, so tan alpha equals, you know tan alpha is 0.75, so that's 3 by 4. So that's opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. And therefore, you know through Pythagorean triples that that's 5. This is just to the side, yeah? The reason you're doing this is so you can find exactly what sine 
alpha is. So sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, 3 by 5, and cos alpha is 4 by 5. Can you see? So every time you see a sine alpha now, you'll change that by th to 3 by 5 and cos alpha 4 by 5. So I'm going to need my weight component here. So this is 5g cos alpha and a downward element 5g sine alpha. And now I can do the problem. So it says find the acceleration of the system. This one's going to accelerate that way. This one's going to accelerate it downwards. So resolving down, let's go for it. Force going down, 10g. What's opposing it? Friction minus 0.2r and the weight 5g sine alpha but we know sine alpha is 3 by 5 equals total mass so the total mass in motion is 15 kilos we also need to know what r is how do we resolve r well we just isolate it at p r is here it has no effect on q so r is in that direction minus the 5g cos alpha is zero but you know so if i bring that over that cos alpha is four by five so this is 4g if we go back to where we were then so this is 10g minus 0.2 r which is, we now know is 4g minus 5g sine alpha we know is three by five is 15a so therefore a equals all that stuff divided by 15. So 10 times 9.8 minus 0 0.2 times 4 times 9.8 minus 5 times 9.8 times 3 by 5 divided by 15 is 4.05. So let's just check that. 10 minus 0 0.8 minus 3 times 9.8 times 15. So I think that's 4.05 to 3 SF. But again, if you think I'm wrong, because I'm doing this quite quickly, because I'm about to get kicked out, uh, you can argue with me. So part B says find the tension in the string. As you know, we have to isolate one section. It makes sense to isolate Q, doesn't it? Because otherwise everything cancels out. So if we resolve in the direction of acceleration, everything's going down at Q, the force going down is 10G, tension supposing it equals total mass times A, and we know what A is, don't we? So if we get tension to be the subject, that's 10G subtract 10A, and we know that A is the thing we just found, which is on my calculator, I'll use the exact, exact value, so 10, 10 times 9.8 subtract 10 answer gives me 57.5 newtons to 3 SF and we're happy.